hello uh, let us know now about the development of pituitary gland or the hypophysis cerebri if you see the pituitary gland here the definitive pituitary gland it consists of anterior lobe or adenohypophysis or pars anterior the posterior lobe or neurohypophysis or pars nervosa you have an intermediate lobe a cleft and the infundibulum how these parts of this pituitary gland develops so in this diagram a b c and the final development from the floor of the primitive oral cavity an ectodermal evagination happens in the third week of intrauterine life i repeat an ectodermal evagination lining the floor of the primitive oral cavity evaginates which eventually grows bigger forming a pouch called rathkes pouch forming a pouch called rathkes pouch which eventually detaches from the oral cavity or from the stomodium gets separated from it and this is that pouch which is having an anterior wall posterior wall and a cleft now this anterior wall this anterior wall of this pouch rathkes pouch grows enormously and forms the this one that is the anterior lobe of the pituitary the anterior wall is forming the anterior lobe the cleft here is persisting as hypophysial cleft this one is the cleft and the posterior wall gets thinned out and this posterior wall persists as this intermediate lobe or pars intermedia so the finally this rathkes pouch which is derived from the ectoderm lining the roof of the primitive oral cavity is giving rise to anterior lobe intermediate lobe and the cleft in between them now coming to the development of this neurohypophysis from where this posterior lobe is developed so it is developed from the evagination of neuroectoderm of the floor of the hypothalamus or from the third ventricle so this evagination of the neuroectoderm which grows which goes on growing and eventually is giving rise to the posterior lobe and the infundibular stalk is it clear so the neuroectoderm derived from the third ventricle or from the floor of the hypothalamus finally is giving rise to the posterior lobe including its infundibular stalk eventually both these fuse so eventually both these fuse and forms a definitive pituitary gland now coming to the uh, anomalies i can start with number 1 cranio pharyngeomas cranio pharyngeoma the site where this rathkes pouch is grown with the subsequent development of the oral cavity and the pharynx the site that original site from where the pouch is formed will be the roof of the nasopharynx and the track from the roof of the nasopharynx we call it as cranio pharyngeal canal the remnants of the cranio pharyngeal canal gives rise to this that is the cranio pharyngeoma which is usually seen in relation to the spinoid bone now coming to the other things like pituitary adenomas or pituitary tumors which usually is found in the anterior lobe chromophobe adenoma 
acidophil adenoma basophil adenoma all these are the tumors which can be seen the chromophobe adenoma is usually seen in the elderly woman characterized by headache and bitemporal hemianopia acidophil adenoma gives rise to gigantism in children and acromegaly in adults basophil adenoma again most commonly seen in women giving rise to cushing syndrome characterized by fatty growth in the region of head neck and trunk the other things the third one i can say is agenesis very rarely there can be agenesis of this pituitary gland and occasionally pituitary gland may be seen in the posterior wall of the pharynx these are all the developmental anomalies number 1 to repeat with the craniopharyngioma the commonest pituitary tumors which can be acidophil adenoma chromophobe adenoma basophil adenoma etc agenesis of the gland and rarely abnormal position of the pituitary gland may be found in the posterior wall of the pharynx thank you